Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a very different weather pattern that is coming to the United States in March. And this is going to be very different from what we've been seeing in February. And in February, we had a lot of record-breaking high temperatures, a couple of rare severe weather events in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. But as we go into March, I think things will be very different. We're going to see a lot more severe weather events in the United States as we trickle into severe weather season for parts of the Great Plains, in addition to some major temperature shifts. I do think overall much of the country will be above average in terms of temperatures, but we are going to break down who will be seeing that and where we'll have a better chance of seeing record-breaking high temperatures and where the best chance for those severe weather events will be during the month of March. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast, and we're going to begin first with the jet stream across much of the United States over the next 10 to 14 days to give you an idea of what the weather pattern will actually actually be here across much of the United States. But I do want to make a quick disclaimer that a lot of the stuff that we'll be talking about in this forecast beyond seven days out does remain quite uncertain. We at least have a general idea of what the weather pattern will be, like the temperatures, will they be above or below average, but we don't know exact details. So exact temperatures or where a severe weather event will happen beyond 10 days out for now is still very uncertain, but we at least can give a generalization of what will be happening. So that's what I'll be going over in this forecast. All right, let's talk more about the jet stream, give you an idea of what the weather pattern will be generally across much of the United States as we go into March. And for right now, we actually have a pretty interesting weather pattern. We have a low pressure system that is actually moving through the Northeast today. This is the one that brought severe weathered areas in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley with multiple tornadoes back on Tuesday. And then back over to the West, we also have another trough off coast, Northwest of areas like Washington and South of areas like Alaska. Behind this system, our subtropical jet stream and our normal polar jet stream are both kind of merging and that's allowing for some divergence and some showers and thunderstorms today. But once we go into this weekend, things will change a little bit. We'll begin to notice another trough moving into the United States as we go into Saturday into Sunday. And this is the low pressure system that will bring a potential for severe weather for parts of the United States. Now, exactly where that happens still is really up in the air. But a couple of areas that I would be monitoring as we go into the late weekend would include areas perhaps even as far north as Minnesota and Iowa for perhaps some sort of conditional risk of severe weather. And then back down into the southeast United United States. This will be a bit more of an area to watch for early next week for the potential of severe weather with this ejecting trough. Once we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, things start to dry out for most of the country. We're going to start to see a bit more of a return of drier and warmer weather for the most part. And with there being really no major disturbances across the eastern tier of the country as we go into the mid to late week next week, I do think we're going to continue to notice a warmer and drier weather pattern across much of the Great Plains and as well as the East Coast because we're not really going to have a whole lot of low pressure systems rolling by, bringing cooler air out of areas like Canada. Once we go closer to mid-March, things are likely going to get pretty active. I do think we're going to have multiple storms entering the United States. The majority of these will be coming from the Pacific Ocean, and these will allow for more of these severe weather events. But obviously, again, where those happen and all those sort of details, very, very unknown. But I do think a much more active weather pattern will start to arrive as we go into the middle of March with multiple different storms entering the country, and all these would have the potential for some aspect of severe weather as we roll into severe weather season. But again, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of uncertainty with what exactly will happen with those storms. I will be breaking down the future radar with those various storms that will be impacting the United States over the next 7 to 10 days in just a few minutes. But I do want to touch on the temperature trends for much of the country. And believe it or not, this is actually something that is easier to predict because these are much more large-scale systems that we're talking about. Notice like the cold air mass back over in areas like Canada and the warm air mass. These are much larger areas than what we're talking about with like a regional severe weather event. Those are much smaller scale systems in comparison to warm and cold air masses. So this is a little bit easier to predict long term. So let's talk a little bit more about that here over the next week or two. Notice this as we go into early March, we are going to have a warm air mass return to much of the Great Plains, the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. Strong southerly winds will continue to lift a lot of moisture and as well as warm air back into much of the country as we go into this weekend. By early next week around March 3rd and 4th, notice that warm air mass could bring some record-breaking high temperatures to areas in the Midwest, the Great Lakes region, and even back into southern Ontario. And then once we go into Tuesday into Wednesday, cold air mass possible back down in southern Canada, but it probably will not impact the United States much because the low pressure system that is currently being forecasted for the tail end of this weekend is likely to stay pretty far up to the north, and it probably will not dip down into the United States very much. It'll probably just ride up there right along the Canada and United States border. Once we go into the mid to late next week, 
week that warm air mass will continue for much of the central and eastern parts of the country but notice back over on the west coast including the pacific northwest this is an area that i do expect a below average start to march when it comes to temperatures pretty much all the way through the middle of march i think overall we're going to continue to stay below average when it comes to temperatures there but for the entire eastern tier of the country anywhere east of the rocky mountains i do think many of those areas will stay above average overall in terms of temperatures and then once we go further into the month of march so around about march 10th or so notice that warm air really is not going to be going anywhere now, what's interesting about this is that it will have some sort of correlation with the potential for increased frequency of severe weather events as we go into march and i do think we're gonna have multiple of those especially due to the fact above average temperatures will lead to some of that across areas like the midwest and the ohio valley if we get a low pressure system and there's enough moisture being pulled out of the gulf of mexico or the pacific ocean and if there is also high enough temperatures like we have here it would allow for that so warm air masses like this very easily could bring that potential to areas like the midwest and the ohio valley with that being said it is still a pretty rare occurrence i know we've had two different severe weather events in the midwest over the last two weeks and that is obviously very abnormal especially for february and even going into march it's possible especially if you continue to notice and observe above average temperatures in much of those areas and then as we go closer to mid to late march things become more uncertain but i do think things will flip a little bit as we get closer to that point i do think we're going to continue to stay a little bit more active along the gulf coast of the united states as el nino continues all the way through spring and then for areas further up here to the north i do think overall above average temperatures will continue west coast of the country i honestly think most of these areas will stay below average all the way through the middle to potentially even end of march i don't think we're going to see a whole lot of variation there i think for the most part it's going to be right around if not below average for many of those areas now let's put this more into perspective on the future radar giving you an idea of where these large storms could be happening over the next seven to ten days and perhaps even beyond that and give you an idea if we'll be seeing any snow or any sort of severe weather over at least the short term time frame in early to mid march and we will begin with what we're talking about this weekend which is honestly going to be pretty much quiet weather for the majority of the country the only exceptions to this will be the pacific northwest and the west coast where active weather will continue there keeping below average temperatures in place and then back down on along the gulf coast in the dixie alley and the southern plains there will be some active weather as we go into friday into saturday with some showers and thunderstorms being possible once we go into saturday into sunday things dry out for much of the great plains in the ohio valley once we go into sunday we'll be watching for that storm ejecting over the rocky mountains and from the pacific ocean this will eventually bring the potential for some snowfall to canada perhaps some sort of low-end threat for severe weather as far north as wisconsin and even eastern minnesota which again is really shocking for this time of the year once we go into monday into tuesday that moves off to the north we'll eventually be dealing with more showers and thunderstorms early next week with a different low pressure system and if this low pressure system and storm position does verify we would at least have some sort of low end risk of severe weather from pro probably about kentucky or tennessee back down to the gulf coast through florida so something to watch for around tuesday of next week but again exactly how high that risk is and what kind of severe weather we see is still kind of uncertain since we're still talking about something that's multiple days out and then once we go into thursday and friday of next week things become a bit more uncertain and then as we go closer to friday and saturday of next weekend things definitely become a lot more uncertain because the computer models are all over the place with the position and placement of various storms but the gfs model in particular does show the potential for multiple different severe weather events as we go into the middle of march so that'll definitely be something to watch for but again if anything like this happens and where it exactly happens remains very uncertain as i mentioned before since we are still talking about stuff that is well over a week out from now so stay tuned and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel we will be keeping you posted with the latest as all this stuff evolves as we go into march